Capital. Jonesboro's Community Radio Station. Your life. Your music. KLEK 102.5 FM. Good Thursday morning, Jonesboro. This is me, your just Tim Root, with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. A series of storms coming from the West Coast. That will be giving us cloud showers and thunderstorms today, tonight, and Friday. And there might be some isolated flooding. So the inclement weather is going to probably last into the weekend as well. The high today with the showers, very close to 70 to 75, and it'll be around 50 tonight. Clouds and showers and thunderstorms Friday and to the weekend, and the temperatures generally in the 50s to near 60 over the course of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your life, your music, we're KLEK, 1 to 2.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. U.S. President Donald Trump suspending all travel from much of Europe to the U.S. for the next 30 days to try and stop the spread of COVID-19. Italy's closed all cafes, bars and restaurants in the country for two weeks over the outbreak. The U.K. is set to announce new measures to try and slow the spread of coronavirus. And in other news, two Americans and one Briton have been killed in a rocket attack on the Taji base in Iraq, which hosts U.S. and U.K. troops. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy foggy Thursday to you. I hope you're having a great start to your day in spite of your tuning in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guests today are Mr. Richard Kirksey and Mr. Owen Lival. Libel. Yes, ma'am. From Arkansas State University. They are running for um, the Student Government Association. And yes, so um, if you're on campus or anywhere around campus, you may have seen their posts and on videos and on Instagram. And so they are really out there campaigning. Uh, so we're going to hear from them what their platform is all about. And first, we're going to hear more about them, hear what Student Government Association is is and what role they play on campus and then we'll hear about the issues that you're advocating for so i'm right handed sorry mr owen <laughs> so we're going to start to my right yes ma'am so like uh, like you said my name is rashad kirksey and i'm running for the presidential candidate for the student government association this upcoming fall um this is coming school year actually i'm a junior political science major uh, from jonesboro I was born in west helena um, but all of my life i've been raised in jonesboro arkansas really? yes ma'am okay so um, I'll go next. Well, I'm the only one to go next, I guess. Um, my name's Owen Libel. I'm from Jackson, Missouri. You know, a little, not really close to Jonesboro. It's about two hours away, two okay. and a half hours away. But I'm a sophomore nursing major here at Arkansas State and in the program. Just go and do it, you know. Right, we need more male nurses. You know, we need all of these professionals to be uh, none. Like, they don't have to be gendered. You know, male or female. We need more male nurses in the field. So God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get into um, what SGA is, and then okay. Also, why you all decided to run? So. Awesome. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll get started talking about what Student Government Association is. It's basically the power given from administration um, to the students in order to make uh, um, resolutions on yeah. behalf of students and advocate for them with any sort of issues that they may have um, to therefore, once they draft that resolution, once it's passed by the Senate, it's therefore left a majority to the administration to get it passed and pull it into effect. Okay. Um, so it's therefore, the, like like I said, the concerns of the students. So would you like in a student government association to, I guess, our national president and Congress um, so in essence, you all would be like the House and Senate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, you can, you can sort of think of it that way. Um, but our staff, as, as what you would probably think of as the executive branch, is kind of like joined with our legislative branch, okay. semi. Um, so they really can't work on resolutions together. Um, but like, you know, how the president can't like send a bill to Congress, but we can. So we oh. can like make resolutions and send oh. it to the Senate. Yeah. Okay, so you have a little more power. Uh, yeah, <laughs> think of it that way. All right, so tell us why each of you decided to run for uh, SGA and for the various positions. Um, so from the beginning, I've always been inv- um, involved with um, 
any sort of student life, even going back to high school and so on and so forth. Um, I just really love advocating for students. I love serving students. Um, and honestly, that's what I enjoy doing. I mean, I just, I simply don't like having nothing to do. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, I love helping others. I love being there for others. And that's always something I've done. Even in high school, I was a student council president, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so moving into college, I knew the student government was something that I was always interested in doing. I didn't know how feasible it was for me to do it. I didn't know if it was logical. You know, being going from a, uh, a high school, it was fairly large for a high school, to a college, a university, I thought this would probably be something I'd never be able to do. Okay. I would never get elected. Um, but I ran my freshman year, um, and so not being in any sort of big organization with support behind me, I ran and I had basically like the top votes almost of okay. that election. And that really showed me that I have a chance to do something here. And me and my one of my closest friends, Blake Moore, um, as a freshman, we were like, you know what, we want to be SGA president and vice president one day. And so we've always just set it into motion from there. And so here we are. Here you are. <laughs> All right. And Mr. Owens, so tell us your story. I'm very much not like Rashad in that aspect, in which he did it in <laughs> high school. Um, I didn't like. Um, the student council in high school at all. Oh. Um, they met at 7 in the morning, and I was in the <laughs> weight room doing um, sports all the time, so it ve was very much not for me. But once I came to college, didn't have any sports to do, and I actually started getting involved on campus with starting to be a pack leader, which is kind of like the front line for um, – college students to incoming first year students okay. we kind of give show them the way of how this college works and I got involved there and then I'm in Lambda Chi here at Arkansas State and Caleb Freeman one of my buddies when they last year I believe for one of the senate spots the spot for like representing my major the nursing and health professions okay. chair came up and he's like hey you should go run and I was like why <laughs> and <laughs> he's like um what do you mean why he's like it's a great opportunity for you and i was like fair enough okay so um then i ran and i luckily got the spot and through that experience i've kind of just realized this university has given so much to me in just a year or two so i think it's kind of my turn to start giving back or attempting to give back to my university that is awesome <laughs> i love to hear young people speak like that so what if your parent when you first decide okay this is what i want to do you tell your parents or guardians whoever is close to your life what was their reaction <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that. <laughs> okay so like i said i didn't do any of this stuff in high school and i'm a terrible son i'm not a terrible son but it's like Every once in a then I just like pile up a bunch of things that I like probably need to tell my parents. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just randomly, it's like, hey, I got, and I'm very nonchalant <laughs> about everything. So it's like, hey, yeah, this test went great. Yeah, this test went great. By the way, I'm a senator now. And they're like, what, hold on, what? Excuse me? And I was like, yeah, I'm a senator. And they're like, how did this happen? I was like, eh, it just kind of happened. <laughs> it just happened. And then I told them I'm. I'll be running with Rashad. And they're like, what? why? And I was like, well, it's time to get back, you know? And they're like, okay, man, I guess. Sure, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from doing nothing, mm -hmm. not being involved, to like, bam, okay, yeah. here I am. It's, yeah. All right. It was very quick. <laughs> Rashad, what was the feedback from your uh, family and peers? Well, like I said, my peers have always known how involved I've been in whatever I did, whether high school or um, college. And so, I mean, they it's something that I've always really talked about. I was like, I think I want to be SGA president, you know, for like my freshman year. My mom was like, well, I think you should do it. Okay. That's what you want to do. You should do it. And always been encouraging me. Every time you turn around, it could be sophomore year. How's the campaign going? I'm like, Mom, the campaign hasn't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even started working on the campaign yet. Um, and so they've always been behind me 100%. Um, actually, we talk every morning about like 6.30 because oh, oh. I'm getting up at 6, getting ready to go start um, campaigning. Um, and so she calls me every morning, encourages me. Um, and so, and my dad does as well. But they are really, really supportive and I'm really thankful for them. Yeah. That's really awesome. All right, so before we get into some issues, let's give a shout out to the rest of your team members that I see on the picture here. Yes, ma'am. So um, that the people that are not here today, either being in class or campaigning for us because we couldn't all come. Uh, we have here Mikey Oligario. She's going to be, well, let me first, let me start off with Blake Moore, my okay. vice presidential candidate, one of my closest friends since grade school. Um, and then besides him, we have Miss uh, Mikey Oligario, um, who's in the, uh, well, 
okay, Mikey Oligaria. She is going for our cultural diversity director. Okay. Um, and then next to her, which is beside me, which is Miss Alexa Floyd, she's going to be our secretary candidate. Um, right next to Owen in that picture is Miss Courtney Atkins, and she is going to be our public relations director. Okay. And then to her at the end is Miss Mary Dunn, who is running to be our parliamentarian candidate. Okay, and so for um, again, I don't know how all of this works. Is there are there teams of so there's another team of people mm-hmm. running against you? Yes, ma'am, there is. Uh-huh. So how many teams or how many? I guess if that's the way to classify it, how many teams are actually running? This year, we're blessed to have just one uh, one team against us, okay. one opposition. I mean, it's been years in the past where it's been three, Ooh. and I don't know, it's probably even been four in the past, uh, which I'm sure that was very interesting. Um, but this year, we just have one opposing team against us. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of our, we have a platform point of eight points. Our main, um, one of our biggest ones is 24-7 library access. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we've heard from students all around, that they want a place to be able to study on campus 24-7. And not all students learn best in their... um, in their uh, residence hall. Okay. I mean, so all students have always advocated for longer library hours. We've even pushed for during uh, finals or midterms for library hours to be extended. Um, sometimes this has happened, sometimes this is not. Um, but we think it's time to go ahead and put this into effect for our students. And so um, this is something, one of our biggest points that we're pushing for, as well as modernized space. Um, oh. So as you see, a lot of libraries around the nation are getting more modernized um, in their layouts, in the way that they um, have, when they organize space and I think this is something that we start doing because even with the buildings like humanities uh, at Arkansas State University you see that they're like laying out the buildings differently because they find out students learn better in different environments and so um, just this is something we think is necessary for our students because you can always learn when you're in uh, a room with no windows you know when you're in a room full of white walls it makes you feel as if you're probably in a prison <laughs> compared to a university's library um, and so I think that's something that's very important so that's one of our main platform points another one is an app that shows study room availability um, within our library there are several study rooms but if you ever try to go and get in one unless you're blessed um, you notice that majority of them are always full and so you're walking around five floors trying to find a study room available and most of the time you're out of luck um, and so with this app it will show which rooms are available and which ones aren't so students can spend more time actually studying as compared to trying to find a space okay. along with that more on campus jobs so the oh. majority yeah a majority of jobs that we have on our campus are for students who have work study and if you're like me, you don't get the privilege to have work study. Um, and so it's really hard to find on campus jobs. Okay. Um, besides probably being an RA and being a resident assistant, it's not always fit for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this would allow students to have worker positions on campus through things like having a 24 7 library access, okay. um, through things like extending the flex hours and the um, restaurant hours in our union. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sure a lot of students would love that because not everyone wants to just stop eating at say seven o'clock whatever time the cafeteria closed Mm -hmm. again if they're up studying they might want to go grab a snack um and they might not want to just use they don't want chips and cookies you know sodas they want some food late night food (laughs) options Mm -hmm. and there i'm sure quite a few students who don't have vehicles and it's unsafe to walk to mcdonald's sometimes or to whatever else is close by so yeah, having that on-campus option would definitely keep the students in a more safer environment. Mm-hmm. Along with that, we're pushing for an MPHC Unity House. Oh. So on our campus, we have three great councils, MPC, okay. which deals with sororities, and IFC, which is for fraternities, and MPHC is historically African-American fraternities and sororities. Okay. Uh, majority of our sorority, all of our soror- MPC sororities and IFC fraternities, majority of them all have gathering houses um, where they can congregate, hold official business, host events, and have residents again. But unfortunately, our MPHC sororities and fraternities don't have this uh, luxury of having these designated spaces. Okay. Uh, many times they have to rent our rooms in the union just to conduct a regular business, um, a, a general body business meeting. Um, and so with this unity house, it would be large enough for every organization to have their own residency inside where they can have rooms where they can have chapter meetings, um, host events, different things like that. Um, and this is something I've heard from students that 
they just want a space that they can call their own. Okay. Um, and I think this is a very important. Uh, we see a lot of universities such as UCA, University of Central Arkansas, um, creating a U- unity house for their um, M- MPs, HC sororities. Okay. So I think it'll be something that's great for us. It's also something that our um, Greek life advisors have also been in the works of planning for our university. Okay. So I think it's important to have the Student Government Association's 100% uh, backing of that and help aiding in trying to get that done for our university. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'll let Owen go on with some of them and talk about a few more that we have. Okay. Okay, so another one that we're doing is in, well, it's going to be kind of a push for more pet-friendly residence halls because after a long day of studying <laughs> and stressing about over a test, who doesn't want to come back to their residence hall and see their adorable little puppy waiting on them? And it's a big thing. I mean, college is stressful. Everybody knows this. And animals... There's just studies behind it, tons of things behind it, where animals will help relieve stress. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a cuddly little puppy. Who doesn't want a little puppy? Along with that, pairing with it, we're going to push for an on-campus dog park. Oh. Because there are students who already have their animals registered. And puppies need buddies, too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go out there with the little flusters and have a little fun. And, and have, the, okay. have the puppies run around with each other. And we see how wonderful of an... Uh, impact maple has made on campus so why not allow everybody to have their own little maple <laughs> I, I understand this too because my sister um actually got her dog Knox, who's an adorable lab parenties mix um she got him her sophomore year and it's like her son she oh. loves that thing with all <laughs> her heart and she said so many times to me how much like just coming home to him or coming back to her residence hall after a long day and then he's just sitting there i mean dogs love everybody they can't hate anything just how good it was for her just to come back to a smiling little puppy face oh wow now with those now i'll go back through the issues because we're going to come up on a break in well, five minutes but i want y'all to get through the issues and we'll come back and elaborate on some of those because i know there's a lot of questions like how is all this going to get done <laughs> so, mm-hmm. well I'll let you go go ahead and get through the okay. issues the next one is a more meal plan variety Ooh. because and this can go with so many things because I mean the flex area which is where we have Chick-fil-A and everything like that is great or but after a while we kind of get it gets repetitive no, you know we yeah. <laughs> we want new things to be filtered in, and they do filter in sometimes, but with these other universities, they have such a wide branch of where they can reach to with these food items, and we feel like it's kind of time for Arkansas State to start pushing more for these new items, and with the meal plan variety along with that, some of this stuff is too high or too low, and we kind of want to try and push for more, I would say... Reasonable pricing. Yes. <laughs> okay, so... Reasonable pricing. I'm going to tell my age, but back when I started school, <laughs> we had the cafeteria mm-hmm. that had like your basic hamburger, spaghetti, you know, just something you would probably eat at home. <laughs> and then there was the wigwam, which is the wigwam even? It's still there. It's now mm-hmm. called the flex area or okay. the food court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that's where you got like the chicken sandwich. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't have Chick-fil-A back then. It was chicken sandwiches, hamburgers, pizza, whatever, you know, some basic fast food type foods. So... Um, so is the cafeteria, the traditional cafeteria, is this still present? Yes, ma'am. Um, and and the, one of the biggest issues with that is, um, especially with our incoming freshmen, is that they only have, majority of their meal plan uh, goes towards the cafeteria. Okay. And a lot of our freshmen, I mean, they want the cafeteria, They the food is in the cafeteria, it's good, uh, but they want more options than that. They don't want to eat it every day. Okay. Um, and so with that, they have flex dollars, which allows them to eat in the flex area. Um, but as incoming freshmen, we only have two, two to three hundred dollars in flex. Three hundred. Three hundred dollars in flex, and that's used up probably within the first couple of weeks. Yeah. I can do that in a month. Oh, yeah. God. And so with this, actually, you can do it within two weeks because you can spend about a hundred dollars a week, ten dollars a meal, okay. um, and that's like ten dollars a day actually. Um, so with this, it will allow for f- even freshmen to have more flex dollars okay. to eat elsewhere. You may want to. You may have all your classes in humanities and want to eat at Einstein's for lunch. Okay. You know, you don't want to have to go back to the calf and eat there every day. That is a trick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For especially for science majors, and that building is like way in the back of the campus, and so and education majors, and so then the business majors. So yeah, that if you are in a certain part. 
and you might not want to go all the mm-hmm. way back. I mean, yes, the exercise is good. We're not saying <laughs> walking is not good. However, uh, we know how the weather in Arkansas gets too. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Rain um, in the morning, be nine degrees in the evening. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like today. Um, mm-hmm. But along with that, let's see here. I think we pretty much covered everything. Our last one is the completion of an indoor pool at the Red Wolf Center. There's one indoor pool at it's one at the hypest. It's in the hypest. The hypest is a great thing, but really the only the only people that really know all the commodities that it has are the people who go there for that major. So it has ping pong, it has pickleball, it has a whole like gymnastics setup, it has a pool. But I barely knew anything about the hypest because I'm a sophomore here until this. Well, I only actually knew about it because my sister was an exercise science major. So she's like, you know, the hypers has all this stuff. It has another gym in it. With like, I went there once, and there's maybe three people in it, and Where it's a whole other gym. Exactly, is the building located? The hypers. Mm-hmm. Um, the hypers is actually by the Delta Center, if you know what the okay. Delta Center for Economic Growth and Development. Um, it's also by the library. Mm-hmm. It's on like that to back the right, side of campus. Like on that back side. You mm-hmm. have the library parking lot, and it's just on that other side of the parking lot. The hypers is. Okay, and so where would, I'm sorry, where would the other indoor pool be? So we have a new recreational facility center. I think it was built like in 2007. Okay. Um, and so it would go inside of that building, which is, if you don't know, by um, Arkansas Hall, and by Humanities. It's a nice looking, updated uh, rec- uh, recreational facility. And so one reason why we're pushing for this is um, the, lo- the indoor pool that we have in the hype is currently is shut down, and it's been shut down several times. I mean, for a lengthy amount of times because it has mold in it. Oh. If you know anything about the hype, if you know it's, it's a very old building, yeah. and that pool is dated with that building. Mm. Um, and so actually at this point, it's costing the university money to upkeep it. Um, and so with this, building a new one, it will be, of course, bringing it to a central area mm-hmm. where students do choose to exercise, where students are mostly congregated for those purposes um, and for recreational activities. Okay. Um, and yeah, it just allows them to... Um, to work out there and swim there in the central area. Alright, well we're going to pause right there and take a quick break. I want to say good morning to the people that are checking in. Mr. Derek Coleman, Ms. Tanya Sanders who says go team Kirk Moore. Um, and Mr. Absolutely. David Nunez thank you all for checking in. Thank you everyone out there for listening. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. How do you love the prickly people in your life? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. And I confess, I'm a porcupine. At least sometimes. The average porcupine has about 30,000 sharp quills that it raises up and shoots into another animal or person when it feels threatened or gets angry. Like a porcupine, when one of my trigger points is pulled, I can get pretty prickly, ornery, and downright cranky. One of those trigger points is unmet expectations. When I build up crazy high expectations for myself or others that are almost impossible to meet, I find myself feeling prickly when they don't get done. When I do, I might inflict some poisonous words on a person I love. And I can't blame anyone but myself. Well, read about my journey as a porcupine at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. K N O M E G A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Guide Right Jonesboro Kappa League, a nonprofit organization that guides young men to a life of achievement. Kappa League Jonesboro on Facebook, Jonesboro underscore Kappa League on Instagram, and Jonesboro Kappa League at gmail.com. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it. And you can hear it repeatedly without feeling anything. But when we introduce a new stimulus, save the food. We've achieved pulling a natural or inborn response from you. Save the food. Because 40% of all food in the US never gets eaten. Save the food. Cook it, store it, share it. Just don't waste it. 
For tips and recipes, visit SaveTheFood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. My suit can still make an impression. And my lamp can bring others a bright future. Because when I donate my stuff to Goodwill, it helps fund job placement and training for people right in my community. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, Visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. KLEK is a nonprofit community radio station and has to rely on the support of listeners like you to continue to give a voice to the community. For the cost of a meal for two, just $20 a month would go a long way to ensure you will get the music and information you need. Please take a moment and fund your support to KLEK. Every donation will help us continue this radio station, giving local people a voice on the airwaves. Our goal is to get 100 new donors. Please consider donating. No donation is too small. Learn more at klekfm.org. This portion of KLEK programming can be made possible by your business. Your support will help in educating, entertaining, and empowering the community by supporting local talent, serving the community you love, and providing information on issues you care about from a different perspective. Call 870-203-9951 or visit klekfm.org to learn how we can help connect you more with the community. KLEK thanks Charles and Candace Mabry and the staff of Mabry Smokehouse for their support of KLEK and dedication to the Jonesboro community. Mabry's offers Texas-style barbecue, beef brisket, pulled pork, ribs, rib tips, chicken wings, smoked sausage, barbecue fries and nachos, sides, and desserts. Located 1504 Red Wolf Boulevard, Jonesboro. Open 11 to 8, Tuesday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday. More info, Mayfrey Smokehouse on Facebook. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more with the motto of anything mean we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and at klekfm.org. Major Key Alert. Life is like school. You will be tested, so pass it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guests are Mr. O Owen Leibel and Mr. Rashad Kirksey from Arkansas State University. They are just part of the team that is running for Student Government Association uh, on the campus. And so we're going to get right back into our conversation. We've been talking about, you know, why they decided to run, the issues that they are running on. I'm just going to read real quick and then we're going to go through each one to kind of elaborate some more. I um, want to say good morning to Daryl Sanders, who says Kirk Seymour, <laughs> Mr. Adrian Everett, and Mr. Patrick Hilson for checking in. Thank you very much. You. All right. So um, you want study room availability an app that shows study room availability mm -hmm. um 24 7 library access more on-campus jobs um an mphc uh, maybe a unity house mm -hmm. um right. pet friendly residence hall and or on-campus mm -hmm. dog park more meal plan variety and indoor pool in a newer building all right so let's just go through these issues now you know most of these of course are going to cost some money somewhere mm -hmm. um and when it comes to staffing, salaries, things of that nature, security. So um, I'm sure you've been asked, how is this, how is this gonna get paid for? How, where's the money gonna come from? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so majority of these things, well, one thing I can say, starting off in general, none of these things on our platform points will cause students tuition to go up at all. Okay. Um, and so, and majority of these things can happen definitely without 
uh, increase in tuition. So things like more on-campus jobs, if anything, that's going to aid the university and help the okay. university. Having the library open 24-7, well, how do you do that? You have student workers. Um, and so that also leads to the thing of having more on-campus jobs. Okay. So you have the, the question, well, they have to pay for the lights and stuff to be on. Well, the lights are on in the library almost all the time. Really? So they turn off the lights at certain times, but it's not going to cost enough um, sufficiently to have to charge tuition to go up. If okay. anything, they have extra funds for that. Um, within, you know, the extra fees that we have already. Okay. <laughs> um, for the push for MPHC Unity House, this will be something that the, uh, the, the Dean of Students has been working on. Um, and this is something that involves Greek life, so it definitely would in in increase student tuition because it'll be something coming from individual councils um, and raising funds like through them, um, along with um, you know, funding from the university as well. Okay. Um, On-campus dog park, if you know anything about a, a dog park, you know that it's very, um, uh, it's not that expensive at all. Okay. Um, and so this is, like I've told you, these are all things that I've talked to the dean students about. And she's 100% behind, and these are things that are, pop, are even probably in the works. Um, um, things that she had on her list to definitely get done, just needing an, an administration willing to work with her to get those things done. Um, and so one of the biggest things that I've been asked about for funding is the pool in the Red Wolf Center. And um, the thing about the pool in the Red Wolf Center is this. So we in our tuition and fees, we have a fee called the Student Recreational Facility Fee. Okay. I mean, that fee was to be used to pay for the Red Wolf Center when, in the, during the time um, the fee was created to pay for because students wanted a new recreational facility okay. other than the hypus. Um, and so what that fee does, it was to be for a certain amount of time uh, to pay off the mortgage of that building. I mean, so the, the mortgage for that building is eventually coming up soon. Okay. And so what that fee would do would be just continue um, and to pay for the funding of the pool. And so it wouldn't even have to be as long as the, the building itself because we know a, a pool doesn't cost as much as a building. Okay and all the things in our uh, Red Wolf Center. So none of these things will increase tuition at all, which okay. is what I'm grateful to say. And we are very um, aware of that when creating our platform as well. Okay, I want to ask this, because uh, I know that a lot of organizations like to have pool parties. Mm -hmm. um, so will um, some of the costs, or can some of the costs be offset if the pool comes to fruition? If an organization wants to have a party, then the, some of the funds they raise from that event goes towards the maintenance and upkeep of the pool. <laughs> okay, well, um, so by being a a student, organ if it's a student organization and you're trying to rent a space on campus for a student organization's meeting, um, usually you're not charged unless you're charging people. Okay. Um, so if they're just having, I guess, a pool party, whatever you want to call it, um, if they're not raising money, most of the time they won't be charged okay. for the, the, the renting of the building. Now, if you're having an event and you're like charging money for it to come in, I know this is especially for like our student union, then you have to pay for the renting of the building okay. uh, for the space. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how that goes. Okay. All right. So we hope to see, I hope to see, even though I'm no longer a student, I hope to see some of these things come to pass before you all graduate. Yes. All right. And so um, let's go back to the meal plan options. Um, I want to ask this. I know that with different people adjusting, um, adapting different diets, do you all have vegan and vegetarian options on campus? We do. We do have those up in our cafeteria. And, and along with this meal plan uh, variety comes, it's a broad amount of things that we could do with that. Okay. So like Owen was saying, having more meal options in our flex area. I um, mean, so a lot of the areas we have in our flex aren't for vegans, like vegans can't eat there. Mm -hmm. um, and so this would be um, adding restaurants or adding menu items that would allow for those types of uh, people who have those type of diets, those foods. Okay, and I'm sure they're greatly appreciated because there are some people who, being a vegan or being whatever their, their diet is, it's not just a fad it's a lifestyle and so they have to be very careful about their foods interacting even the utensils interacting mm -hmm. with other items and i know there are some people who have a kosher diet and they have to be very mindful of how their food is processed and so it will be nice to see all of those um different things uh taken into consideration i know okay you can't meet every single person's need however if you can't meet a few of the students, that'd be really great versus none. Yes, ma'am. Alrighty. And so, um, the Unity House, we talked about that. Um, 
coming together. So again, I hope to see that. I'm happy to see that, you know, there is a Unity Park and one day we'll see all the flags raised at the Unity Park. Okay. Um, I would ask Mr. Owen, uh, since you are part of a fraternity, mm -hmm. um, Help out with the with the classification. Is it I F? What is it? I F C. Okay. Inter International Fraternity Council. Okay. And then, what role will you all help, or will you all try to help and advocate um, and support the MPHC? With that, um, you have your separate I F C, and there's a whole like president and all that of I F C, and I'm sure that they know a lot more about this than okay. me because I'm just I'm just a member and of um Landa Kai so we haven't really been informed too much on it okay but I know Booker Mays he's been all for this for a long time and he's really dealing with he's helping out with basically any top any form of Greek life now Mr. Booker Mays has been helping out a lot with a, a lot with a lot of that okay. kind of sounds weird to say but yes okay awesome Alrighty, so let's talk about debates. You know, okay, you laid out your issues. Other teams laid out their issues. Have you all had a face-to-face -face debate about these issues? Well, we have not had a debate <laughs> just yet. Um, the upcoming debate is on Monday okay. um, at 6 p.m. in the auditorium, in the student union, the third floor of the uh, student union in the auditorium. All right, so, so all the student body, staff, faculty, everybody's invited? Yes, ma'am. All right, so are y'all ready? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Do you know who's going to be the moderator for that debate? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think it'll be our election commissioner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who is that person? Or do you know who it is? Uh, his name is Drew Robertson. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, all right. So let's talk about the advisors. Um, if you are, well, first of all, if you are elected, when will the work start? So if elected, we'll be um, in, initiated, inducted, I guess how you want to say it, um, into office during like the second or third week of April. Okay. Um, and so then our work will begin. Oh, okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Right before the semester ends. Right before the semester ends. So and we have the whole summer <laughs> to plan it our year, get everything, re um, resolutions wrote up, drafted, and get them ready to get forced to the Senate, talk to administration. So there's no downtime. No downtime. <laughs> we don't believe in downtime. No, ma'am. No rest for the weary. No. <laughs> Alrighty, I want to say good morning to Mr. Gerard Lockhart who's checked in. How you doing over there? All these A State people checked in. Thank you all so much for the love. Alrighty, so then who would be your advisors, the people that you would answer to, I guess, directly? So one of our immediate uh, advisors for the Student Government Association uh, is Miss Katie Province. Okay. Um, she works in the Leadership Center, um, and so she's like our immediate advisor, like okay. the one like that comes to our staff meetings and, and our SGA meetings, like that. Also, um, right, like kind of like above her is Miss uh, Dr. Martha Spack, okay. um, and she is the dean of students. And so, like student or, uh, student leadership organizations basically like come from her office. Yeah. Okay. Now, will um, faculty and staff be able to vote, or is it strictly students? This is strictly students. We okay. have undergrad students that can vote, graduate students that can vote. So, if you're taking any sort of course through Arkansas State University, Jonesboro campus you can vote okay online students online students even students in high school that are dual enrolled yeah if you're taking concurrent vote. classes all right so you have y'all had a chance to go to the high schools to um not just yet we do have dates planned to go speak to them yes ma'am we do all right so will the whole team get to go um well the thing is about that our whole team unfortunately can really never <gasps> like go anywhere uh, for the simple fact that we always have to stay campaigning. Mm -hmm. um, so only time I think our team will probably be together, like together together, <coughs> will be at the debate um, in which we'll be supporting one another okay. there. But um, we do have times to meet together, but we're never always together. Because, always I mean, together. <laughs> you know, we never would compromise anyone's class schedule or, you know, other engagements that we have okay. to be at. Yeah. Well, uh, if you are elected, will you try to, I don't want to say just, um, maybe align your schedules like for next semester or the um you know the next semester yes ma'am yes ma'am only thing about elections is the fact that what you're trying to campaign to are students who are going to class okay <clears throat> and so because like after dark we can't campaign like in certain areas like the library and okay. the union we can't campaign in those areas so <coughs> once going to um once going to trying to get the students that are going to class we kind of have to set up outside or in other academic buildings um, and so with that um, that's during the time that we have class as well okay. so we can't not <laughs> just go to class but if elected as a staff 
Of course, we all have regular scheduled staff meetings where everyone will be in attendance. Of course, we have our regular Senate meetings, uh, like our general body meetings with everybody, which will all be there. Um, and we'll be, you know, of course, together all the time, of course. Uh, all right. We have office hours, all that good fun stuff. Alrighty. So tell people how they can reach out to you, where they can find you. How they can show their support for you. Yes, ma'am. So we are on two social media platforms. We are on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Um, And you can follow us at Kirksey Moore 20, K-I-R-K-S-E-Y-M-O-O-R-E 20. Um, And those are our two social media platforms. On there, you can learn more about our staff. Um, You can learn about our supporters. You can learn more about our platform points. All of that fun stuff. Anything. And if you ever have any questions about anything, always direct message us. You can call us. If you have our numbers, I'm not going to give it out over the air. Okay. Um, But if you have our numbers, if you have someone that has it, reach out to us. Um, Yeah, email us, whatever it is. Because, I mean, I've had several questions. And, I mean, of course, when it comes down to stuff like this, the students' biggest questions are, how will my tuition be increased? Okay. Yeah. Look, we... And, and, and of course, I've been, I've been, I've been in, uh, going through this a long time. So, like, um, this past year, we didn't have a contested uh, election. Okay. But the year before that, we had a highly contested election. So, I understand all the questions that students have and their concerns and their want to know about how do you plan to do this and if this is something that's actually feasible to do. Okay. Another big thing, sorry to interrupt you, but no. another big thing about the social media, when the link goes out to vote, we will be putting that in our bio to make sure everybody is able to vote and we'll be blowing everybody's phone up, making sure they go vote because you can get a lot of supporters, <laughs> but sometimes like it's just a simple day. Like For us, it's a big day. It'll be next Tuesday and Wednesday and we'll be really pumped and really anxious throughout that whole day, but like for the past following years, it's just normally a typical another day for the majority of people on campus, okay. so it's easy to forget that like hey it's time to vote y'all like come on but we'll be reminding everybody through social media and all the other platforms like Owen said you can show your support and we love that we love you taking pictures we love you wearing our shirts the buttons being Mm -hmm. cards but the true test comes down to when you actually vote (laughs) okay yeah show your love and support now I'm not a student or anything so I I don't have a dog in this race so Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say show your support for the team you feel best represents you Um, of course I've met Mr. Rashad before. No offense to any other students. So I'm kind of biased toward this group. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have my support, even though I'm not a student. So, <laughs> um, I was looking at your Instagram stories, and I see so many people are really supporting you wearing your t-shirts. Can you, and you only bring me a button today. That's okay. I, I was actually trying to get you a button, <laughs> uh, but things happen but i will definitely bring you one i, I will definitely have bring you a button yes ma'am you, would, you have one for sure set aside all righty thank you all right so tell us what you have planned like today's only thursday today's thursday mm-hmm. so what is on the agenda for tomorrow for campaign wise just okay okay so of course we can't say everything yes. we're gonna be telling all our, our plans. <laughs> the, the, the team know what's going yeah, on yeah everybody know what's going on mm-hmm. i mean i mean and the th- good thing about that i can just say this now is the people that we're running against are people that um, i know for sure one of the candidates the presidential candidate i've known for a while um and i have nothing but respect for her uh, and her team and so uh, throughout this whole thing we've been wanting to be nothing but a clean fair competitive competition right. um, between friends and and i can say for my on our part we've tried to uphold that to best i mean uh, 100%. Um, and mean. so, and that's what I'll say about that. And so, like, <laughs> I'm not going to, don't plan to speak negatively or anything about the other team at all because that wouldn't be right. Um, know, I appreciate that. Even with, like, our campaign, the election we have going on now, you know, the national and all that, I respect the candidate more when they can focus on their issues and present themselves versus tearing down somebody else. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to think about that because at the end of the day, after elections are over, you're still going to be students. Yeah. You're still going to have to work with one another no matter what capacity it is. And so, why tear that relationship apart when you're probably still going to be going to school together one or two more years and what are you going to do? Just hate each other and talk about each other? It's, it's really not worth it. And I I don't plan on using my energy trying to dislike someone else. So, yeah. okay, man. you try to keep your grades up, graduate on time. Mm, and I'm worried about everything else. I'm not worried, I'm worried about hating on you. So, uh. Oh, you have any comments you want to throw in? Uh, I mean, I'm with Rashad. I want it to be a nice, clean. I wouldn't, 
wouldn't want to say it's a fight because it's not a fight <laughs> um, just a nice clean debate and nice clean campaigning um now let me add this people may think i'm competitive but you all don't know owen owen is truly <laughs> oh my goodness competitive now i am competitive i love to win now but it's on a different level with owen. i'm telling you i'll race people going upstairs it, <laughs> I'm, my competitive is at the point where it's kind of it's not really healthy <laughs> and i thought of this when adding him on our staff so let's just say that <laughs> no i very much do not like to lose and that's that's been my whole life so do you think it comes from your sports background absolutely i mean i was a three sport athlete in high school oh, wow. just yeah i did it all it was crazy um but yeah it's <laughs> it's it's becoming a problem lately because in high school there was an outlet for it but now it's like anything it's like oh you want to race me and get into the car first when it's 10 feet away okay let's go you want to race me going up these two flights of stairs okay let's go who gets to the door first oh consider it done yeah so why did you uh join any sport why did you play sports for college <laughs> It came down to the fact where the sport I would have played would have been football. I sent emails when I was a sophomore in high school, but emails didn't get sent or didn't get received and fed back. But it came to the fact where I would have been an offensive lineman. Big guy, and that's where I would have been. And it would have been dealing with a lot of injuries because I didn't ever sustain any serious injuries, but I could tell like my knees started to get a little bit more weak. Okay. And it was like, am I going to go do this? Because... I would only play for four more years, if that. So am I gonna destroy my body when long term, your brain is your most important part of your body, obviously. And I would rather put more effort going 100% into my major than it would be football. Cause I'm not gonna do anything where I'm not going 100%. I'm not gonna be 50-50, I'm not gonna be 75-25. Anything I'm gonna do is gonna be 100%. So I stopped doing sports so I could be fully involved in my major and my grades. Okay. How did your parents feel when you told them, or how did the conversation go? <laughs> they understood it and they backed me because they they left it up to me. Because I mean, I was 18 at the time. I was like, "Your decision, you do with it what you want." I was like, "I think this is a good decision for me and a good decision for my future." Okay, awesome. All right, so we got about a minute left in this segment. So, any other comments you would want to make to, about the campaign, and just you know, what are your thoughts and feeling like? How are like on a day to day? How are you really feeling? <laughs> I'm excited, <laughs> especially Rashad talked about the 24 hour library, but I'm I'm absolutely for it. I it probably got to a point last semester in the following two years where I'd have to pay <laughs> rent at the library for how many time how much time I wouldn't have to pay rent, but how much <laughs> I spent time in the library. I mean, I was there from open till close. It was a re- it's like. Hey, you going to the library? And everybody's like, yeah, I'll be there for two hours. Like, no, it was, I'm here till one wow. studying. This is no questions asked. And it, and I knew the, with Packlin who gave tours, I knew the hours like it was the back of my hand spitting off the hours at the library. So the 24-7 is going to help me out tremendously because with um, my major, the not before test, my group, my study group meets in the library and we study together and talk through things. And having that 24 7 because i mean sometimes you get to leave early because you know the stuff but sometimes you do not and you'll go back to your dorm and study till two three in the morning Mm -hmm. with just yourself and that group is adding a lot to it oh wow all right then we're gonna put a pause right there we'll come back with mr rashad chime in Mm -hmm. um, sorry about that and talk about (laughs) because i don't want to hear how many floors on the library and then how many study rooms are actually all right i didn't get to that i'm sorry so we'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back and then we'll wrap up our discussion. Mm-hmm. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmond Jr. Our Think Wealthy quote of the week comes from John Rogers, founder of Ariel Investments, one of the nation's largest black-owned asset management firms. Rogers says, My father has started buying stocks for me you know, every birthday and every Christmas after I was 12. So I learned to get comfortable with the markets and uh, have total confidence in my ability to pick stocks and sell stocks and do the right things. Rogers is a great example of what happens when we invest in the financial education of our children 
at an early age. You know, you can't get frightened out of the bottom and go trying out something new and some new concept uh, with you don't know it's going to work. You've got to stick with what you understand and believe in. Just to think long term, stay the course, and not let all the short term noise pull them out of the market exactly the wrong time or pull them back in at exactly the wrong time. For more information or for past shows, go to AURN.com. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumnidst.org Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Matt Kenseth. You don't have to be a race car driver to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you can't control, like mechanical issues, high winds, and rain delays. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and leave the drama for the racetrack. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Russell Wilson here with Play 60. United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids! To get involved, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Donate! Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course! Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. KLEK thanks the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. Hello, I'm Officer Jonathan Hagens of the Jonesboro Police Department. One of the best decisions I ever made was to join the Jonesboro Police Department. Since joining, I've had the pleasure to give back, protect, and serve my community. Now I want to let you know about that same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing for the patrol officers at the Valley View High School. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place the Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information, 870-935-5657. Applications are being accepted. Applications are available at jonesboropolice.com. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Royal Priesthood International Ministries, 5193 Highway 1 South, Jonesboro, under the leadership of Bishop Raymond Williams, Prophetess Teresa Lee Williams, and Pastor Joel Thompson. Bible study Sundays, 9.30 a.m., worship 11 o'clock a.m. They also offer a prison ministry. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn earrings today. Buckle up, Sarah. Michaela's got, like, the best earrings. Sarah, buckle up. I wish my name was Michaela. We're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah, seatbelt. I wonder if there's pizza at school today. It can be tough getting through to kids, but it's your job to make sure they're wearing your seatbelts. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. 
Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with my special guest, Mr. Rashad Kirksey and Mr. Owen Leibel. Uh They are running for Student Government Association uh, Senate, I guess you staff. staff, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. and on the campus of Arkansas State University. So as you can see behind, well, you can, it's a little blurry. It says, Howling for the Pack 2020, Kirksey Moore, and it has everyone else's name listed. So it's Howling for the Pack, like the theme for this year or that you all's theme or yeah it's it's, so it's our theme for our campaign um it's our uh coin phrase like okay (laughs) all righty so how did y'all come up with that or how what was the inspiration behind it so every campaign has like their own phrase or whatever to go with it and i blake and i was just thinking of something that involved us that showed that we're inclusive of all that we're reaching not only just to certain groups but to the whole university okay. and so when we think of the pack of course you know our, our chancellor had the phrase um uh all all what do you say every, all, red, wolf every red wolf counts mm-hmm. and so a collective of red wolves okay. a collective of wolves is considered is considered to be a pack um and so we are howling for the pack advocating for the students that is awesome yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see young people's you. brains at work. <laughs> Alrighty, I know, and I sorry to call y'all young people, but compared no. to my age, mm-hmm. y'all could be my sons. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so anyway, I uh, did want to go back real quick. We talked about the library before we went to break, and how many floors um, actually have study rooms <laughs> in on them? For the library, li- for um, so for. Everybody, it's floors two to five, and then on the very first floor, there's <coughs> sorry, there's some honor study rooms with like a few little tables that aren't really like set up for studying. Okay. <coughs> sorry, but you can study there, and then study rooms are on two to five, like okay. I said. And then you talked earlier about um, making them more up to date, I guess you say more modernized. So, would that include maybe different outlets, um, tech? tech technology updates um maybe for um shoot what do you call it okay i can see it in my head but i can't what do you, when you flash something on the wall on the projectors or anything projector. the real fancy oh projectors they got yep. <laughs> my brain that look like spaceships yep. mm-hmm. my brain would be like so projector capabilities um just all other any other amenities that you would need to do work on a project or a presentation? That that's part of it, um, and like I said, the university has has been pl- thinking about this for a long time now, updating the space in the library. Um, and I've been in um, I've been in um, meetings with um, the chancellor where they've been putting funds aside to like actually update the library. Um, and so I know this is something that they definitely want to do for sure. Yeah, and again, I'm kind of basic kind of today but kind of basic are there board what they call them smart boards that are is that something y'all thought about too is it kind of like a whiteboard but interactive Mm -hmm. i mean those are those are options um as far as like a full design or anything like that for what the library could look like we don't have that okay Um, but we do know that of course the space itself needs to be updated for sure all righty all right so in our last minute any final words or any shout outs anybody I just like to thank my whole team, um, everybody that, of course, I mentioned before. We have some awesome people that help us along with our campaign. Miss um, Blaze Cantrell, she's kind of like you think of our campaign manager. She's awesome at what she does. Uh, one of my good friends, Jake Williamson, uh, he's also a great supporter. Uh, my friend Brandon, I mean, I just, I have a lot of, this has really shown me the amount of support that I have. And so I'm really grateful for that. My family, my, my parents as well. Um, everyone has been so helpful and supportive. Alrighty, oh, and my friend, sorry, my friend Quentin, he's been also great, okay. really great, very great. Really, it's just anybody that's gone along helping us. Um, obviously, any of my friends know who they are. I couldn't <laughs> begin to tell you everybody's names. Yeah, I, I should have um, probably mentioned them. Yeah. But no, the support is just unreal that we've seen so far. Everybody wanting a shirt, everybody wanting a button, everybody wanting one of the business cards. It's really insane. It's been it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited for the rest of the campaign. Awesome.
Awesome. All right. I want to say also good morning to Ms. Sharon Harvey. Thank you for checking in. And thank you to each and every person out there who listened, watched our video, um, for supporting Kelly K. This is why we're here to provide this platform for individuals like you all to share this information. Um, we want people to know that Arkansas State is not a separate entity from the city of Jonesboro. Mm-hmm. And so we invite you all here to share what's happening on campus so that we can feel a part of what's going on and then we can embrace you all and support you any way we can we can't vote for you all but we can support you in some shape form or fashion we can share all your posts <laughs> so um if you want to see this team rise to the top share their posts show them some love absolutely and have a great thank day thank you for everybody. listening to community <laughs> conversations on klek 102.5 fm program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not